Hey everybody, this is Defense Mechanism. Just wanted to make an LSDJ video about the new features in version 8, um, along with some of the other changes, improvements, enhancements, and so on. Um, so I'm kind of just going to go through the differences between the last stable version that was version 6, and also talk about a few of the changes since version 4 which actually make it closer to version 4 than even what version 6 was in some ways. Uh, so the first thing you might notice, uh, a few changes on the screen. Um, we had this nice dithering, which is really nice on uh, hardware. It makes the shading less obtrusive. It's a little bit funny looking in the emulator, but you can always customize color palettes in emulators, so it's not as big of a deal. Um, the font is actually a font, a custom font. The stock ROM doesn't look like this, but this is the one that I use. Um, you also notice the screen map in the lower right corner is a little different. The main row from song, chain, phrase, instrument, table is the same. Um, but you can see we're down to two rows instead of three. And we have project, groove, synth, and wave. So I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so first things first, if you try to get to the chain screen from the song screen by pressing select and right, it says tap A to add a chain. So this is uh, a little bit new. You only have to tap A once and it will make a new chain. Um, when you go to the next row of tapping A once, we'll use the previous chain and tapping A twice will make a new chain. And what's nice is that no matter how many times you keep tapping A, it's not going to create a new chain. So you can create new chains without having to worry about like using up your chains by pressing A too many times. And the same thing is true for phrases. Um, so let's create a pulse instrument. We can talk about some of the changes here. Um, instruments now, by the way, are uh, set to the channel that you create them in by default. So for instance, if I go to the wave channel, create a new phrase, create a new note, a new instrument is created. It's a wave instrument. And it's also set to manual uh, by default. So that's handy. But let's go back to the pulse. And I'll go over some of these instrument changes. Uh, you'll see we have ADSR instead of envelope. Now, a lot of people get confused about this, um, but it's actually not hard. ADSR, by the way, stands for attack, decay, sustain, release. It just, it's like chaining E commands together. Uh, it lets you have more control over um, the instrument's volume. And you can create more complex volume curves. So the first digit is the volume from zero to F zero being off and F being the loudest possible volume. And then the second digit is zero through seven length. So you can see zero actually means hold at this volume indefinitely. Uh, but once we start to add in a second digit, then it opens up the second stage of the ADSR. So if you wanted to start the volume at two and then slowly fade up to volume six, then you can have this envelope and what this what's really nice about this is it lets you fade up in volume like fade in and increase volume but it doesn't go all the way up you might remember with the previous envelope if you used a digit from 9 to f a second digit in the envelope it would just increase in volume indefinitely and you would have to use an e command in the phrase somewhere um, so let's hear what this this will increase all the way to six and then hold it there and then if you wanted to fade out again uh like say to zero then you could have it fade out over you know this isn't in ticks this is actually using the hardware volume so if you change the tempos this is going to sound exactly the same uh so that's how the adsr works I was also going to mention this little change over here where you see uh, we don't have zeros in this column anymore. Uh, that's kind of cool because if you have something, if you wanted to do something like put an E command on every other step and then like, you know, do something like this and change all of these volumes at once, the values in between don't get changed to something else. Um, so that's kind of nice. 
Um, moving on, see for in the pulse instrument, we've got our waveforms, our output, length, sweep. This is all the same as it's been in the past. This pitch is the same as the PLV in version 6. It just got renamed to pitch to kind of make it a little easier to describe, I guess. It makes more sense to look at pitch than it does to look at PLV. A uh, transpose switch, which will uh, determine whether the project or the phrase transpose uh, is applied to this instrument. PU2 transpose, this is to transpose the second pulse channel. Fine tune is what used to be called PU tune, but it's called fine tune now. And command rate. In version 7, it was called effect speed, but this actually controls the speed of the C command. So you notice, let's just do like a little major triad over here. So in case, for instance, you're at a high tempo, and by the way, our tempo is now increased. We can go all the way up to 295, um, which you can actually do uh, on a, um, a Game Boy. I'm, I have BGB emulating in DMG mode, so it's using it's emulating the slow processor of a DMG, but there have been a lot of optimizations in this version done that let you do things like you know 3V commands at once, and a really fast tempo, and it doesn't really choke. Um, it, it definitely doesn't choke. The interface gets a little bit less responsive, but it's still, it's it's really good. Uh, you can you can do a lot more than you used to be able to, especially from version four. Okay, so let's. You hear that? It doesn't really sound like an arpeggio. It doesn't even really sound like a chord. It's just, it's too fast. Um, so you can slow it down by increasing the command rate. Um, and that kind of offers some more control without having to use a table and, you know, control it by a groove or something like that. Um, so th the other part of command rate is when you change the pitch to tick mode. Um, this will also change the rate of P commands and V commands. So... If we slow this down, it's really cool with V commands. It kind of gives you like a an arcade style sound. So anyway, uh, that's kind of nifty. Um, so let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Tables. Um, so you can turn on these tables. Uh, default is play, which is just the normal mode of playing each line at one line per tick. Um, you also see the same thing with these command columns. There are no zeros here, so uh, that makes that kind of nice, again, to deal with. Um, you can change from between play and step, and these just toggle back and forth. Uh, step mode is what used to be called automate. So every time the instrument triggers over here, it will play a different step in this table, a different line. Um, I should also mention the new version of the LSDJ manual is out. I think it's 8.3.1. Um, I'm using 8.3.5, which is just the latest version um, so far, I think it just came out today, so <laughs> hopefully it will be stable and there won't be more bugs, but don't know that for sure, but, um, it's definitely ten tr trending towards stable, uh, so I can recommend this version. Um, a couple of new things, oh, regarding the ADSR, this um, doesn't change how E commands or how volume columns in the tables work. So E commands in the phrase still work like they normally do, and so does the volume column with one exception. So like, let me just put in this example. And if you remember, this first digit is volume, the second digit is the number of ticks. that this lasts for. So with the exception of the second digit being F, which now means hop to the line of the first digit. So this will hop to line zero. 
Um, and you can change this. So that might be one change that might need to be made in some of your songs if you ever used a volume column in a table with the second digit being F. Of course, it's not a really big deal because if you have something like 3F, you can just use an extra line and go 3E and 3-1, and this is the same. So I think that's about it for pulse instruments. Um, pulse 2 is about the same as pulse 1. There's not much difference. Uh, wave instruments, let's talk about these. The first thing you should notice is the oscilloscope uh, on the right side of the screen, which is pretty cool. It shows you what's happening in the wave channel. Um, we have a few new things here. Uh, we have our fine tune in the wave, which allows us to fine tune from zero through F and then zero through negative F. Uh, so that's pretty nifty. Uh, we also have the command rate, which does the same thing here that it does for pulse. Synth, um, one nice thing about the synth screen or the synth uh, parameter here is like, say I make, you know, whatever I normally do here. Let's just make like a kick or something. I forget how I normally do this, but something that, that's fine. Um, we can see that this is what this looks like. And then let's say like that I make a, a change over here just because I want my kick to sound different. Um, we can now clone a synth from the instrument screen. So if I hold select and press B and then A, this will clone the synth, and the cool thing about this is it actually um, clones each waveform by itself. So it it uh, it doesn't just clone the synth parameters; it actually clones the waveforms uh, along with the parameters. Um, again, manual is by default, but we can always change it to once or loop or ping pong. The only other difference here is that um, where you can't change the loop position when it's in once. Um, you can only change it for loop and ping pong, and this used to be repeat, but instead of saying the number of frames that repeat, this is actually where the loop position is set. So in other words, this is going to play all F, which is 16 of the frames, and then it's going to loop back to frame zero. So if you only want it to play the last frame when it ends, then you just set the loop position to F. I think it's a pretty sensible way of um, thinking about it. And all of your songs will sort of be auto upgraded to set the loop position uh, according to how the synths repeated. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is probably the silky wave. Um, so this is really noticeable when you set this speed to one or two, a really low speed, so. Um, in older versions of LSDJ, that sounds pretty rough because there are a lot of clicks. Um, it has to do with when the waveform ends. It doesn't nicely sort of end at a zero crossing, uh, which means there's kind of an abrupt transition between the waves, and that's what makes an extra click. Um, so that's why that uh, used to sound different. Um, what happened now is there's a timer that's implemented and it keeps track of when the waveform actually plays the last sample and then it switches to the next waveform at a better place. Like In other words, you have a complete waveform and then it plays the next waveform starting from the beginning that doesn't play just a partial waveform. Um, so you can do all kinds of really cool stuff um, if I wanted to do one of these kinds of things where we do our little duty cycle, um, like Sid style. Like that sounds so good. Um, <laughs> sometimes though, I know that people have exploited this um, to try to get the wave channel to essentially do like two, you know, um, two tones by using the R, I mean, by using the, um, 
by using that click as its own sort of second oscillator. So what we can do now is uh, R use R to re-trigger the synth at every tick, and then um, this will actually restart the waveform. The only downside is um, you have to specify the waveform on every tick. So we can do, oh, let's do this. And then I'll kind of show you how this works. Um, so I've got, this is a little tedious, but so, th I mean, I guess the downside is that you have to use a table, but the upside is that it does give you control uh, over how this works. So you can kind of, so you can see that this R command will sort of, it's sort of like a disabling the silky wave. Um, that being said, so like, let's put this back to ping pong. If I wanted to re-trig this every, I think. So um, this is something that didn't work in version four or version six is uh, re-triggering the wave synth doesn't actually re-trigger the wave frame. Um, so that's kind of cool. Let's go back to the kick that I was going to create. Take a look at this table. Uh, I'm just going to make a, a little kick table here. I'm going to set my synth to drum. And going to turn this transpose off. Um, I like to control this slope of the kick by using a transpose command. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about that's not the same in version 6 is that when this transpose actually will transpose to a note uh, when you use the L command. Um, normally this, it doesn't, the transpose column doesn't work without the L command, but if you wanted to actually tune your kick to like a certain tone, you can do that now. Um, I don't really have any particular sound in mind, but That was something that you can do in version four, but you couldn't do in version six. So we have this ability to transpose it to a tone. That's really nice, I think. Um, let's see, what else have we got? Um, oh yeah. So there's a new retrig, which is R80 through 8F. And what this does is this actually retrigs like super fast, um, 360 times a second. And then I think as you increase these digits, it gets like half as fast each time. So you'll be able to hear that here, I think. And some people might recognize this as the old, the sound of the old um, version four pitch wrap. So this is like what it used to do. Um, ooh, that's fun. Um, it's a little harsh. And then you can combine this with a pitch rap. Oof. All right, sorry. Clear out this phrase. But now you have actual control over how, what, like, this sounds like. Um, another thing to note is that this doesn't work on samples because samples already refresh at frame rate, basically. Um, next things next, a couple of command, a couple of command things. Speaking of kits, let's load up a kit and let's put some notes in it. This is going to be really. Uh, 
Not my finest work, but... This is just kind of a proof of concept thing, so... Okay, groovy. Um, let's talk about this command, this B command, which is called the maybe command. Maybe play note. Um, so the first digit is... Uh, well, actually, the first digit stands for the left... Uh, sample here and the second digit stands for this one so zero means like basically never play this note e either of these notes and then uh, F would be basically always play this note so we can set some different probabilities here just kind of be random And what's kind of cool about that is if you ever wanted to use a hop command, um, so looking at there, first digit is the number of times and the second digit is the row. So if you ever wanted to hop, you know, do something like this. Um, you'll always have a different different sound here um, the next thing is uh, the Z command now works with B and it also works with D and it also works with G uh, we didn't have the ability to do that before so I'll just kind of briefly demo that we've got some random probabilities happening here not the most musical or practical thing but you know it works. Uh, so let me demo this. Like this is, I like this a lot. Um, so we've got our groove. Oh, by the way, um, let me talk about the navigation. Uh, one thing is the top row remembers where you are. So that's kind of nice if you need to switch between the synth screen and the phrase screen. Um, like even if I go over here, it still remembers where I am. Um, always going up from a wave instrument will take you to the synth screen always going up from a groove command will take you to the groove screen and then always going up from the song screen will take you to the project screen because it's nice to have this clone here so there are some shortcuts so hopefully you don't get too lost uh mostly just like trying to remember to go up instead of down when you get to the groove but anyways so let's take a look at these grooves let's make groove one a, a little bit of a swung groove and then make groove two like even more swung and then when we come here we can do this like z02 and it'll randomize between being straight or or kind of swung or like really swung so that can add some kind of like really weird lilty almost like drunk feeling uh swing which is really cool i like that a lot um so let's see. I also wanted to talk briefly about B in a table. I don't know that this is going to be the best. Maybe I should use an instrument instead of a kit here. So um, the way that the maybe command functions in a table is like an H command. So you can put a B command here and it will do a maybe hop. So the probability that it will hop to line zero, we can set at about eight and then it'll that hop to, to this, you know, octave transpose about half the time. Or let's put it two octaves up. So, that's kind of a fun thing. Um, just a way to add variation. Um, 
I think that might be the only stuff that I had to talk about. But feel free to... Um, oh, I guess we, we've got one more. The noise channel stuff. Shouldn't forget this. Let's change our shape a little bit. Again, we've got... Um, our ADSR output length shape S mode. This is pretty much all the same free, free or stable, pretty much all the same. We've got a command right here because we've got P commands and C commands in the noise channel. So let's how this works is I actually wanted this to be F. Um, P command applies an S command with this value on every tick. So it's like setting a table of S, F0, and then H00, and it'll just hop and keep applying this S command. So command rate controls the rate of that. Um, likewise, C command is like having one tick with this S command and then one tick without this S command. So it kind of alternates. And again, you can change the speed. So yeah, um, I think that's most of the changes. Um, I will say that the song cleaning song data is now it now deduplicates like duplicate chains and duplicate phrases. Cleaning instrument data deduplicates like duplicate instruments or duplicate tables or duplicate synths, I think. And uh, loading and saving is now extremely fast. It's like almost instantaneous. Like it's painful to me <laughs> to go back to an older version before this quick saving was implemented. And I know this doesn't seem you know insane but like i'll load up an empty song here and you'll see like it's instant um or loading up this one again boom we're done so i really like this version of lsdj a lot i think it's really really cool there's a lot of stuff uh that is more compatible with version 4 but also just a lot more brand new stuff um if you have ideas for features, there's an LSDJ wish list I can put in the description of this video. If you have more questions, feel free to ask me and I'll try to respond the best I can. Uh, mostly I just kind of wanted to show this off because um, Johan Kutlinski has been working on this for months, uh, spent a lot of spare time on it, did a lot of really good work. Um, a lot of people provided some really good ideas and helped find bugs where they uh where they popped up and uh he got those taken care of and overall like it's just been an absolute joy to write music in uh and a joy to use so thanks for watching i hope you found this useful and uh happy tracking <laughs>